by my yeah, man. This is the book of Luke, chapter 9, starting at verse 60. And it says, Yahweh Shai said unto him, Let the dead bury the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Okay, verse 61. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at my uh which are at uh home at my house. In verse 62, and Yahweh Shai said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. I want to give all honor, all glory, and all praise unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders of the nation of Israel. Shalom to your brothers out there that are laboring, enduring the elements, making your body a living sacrifice, trying to seal the elect, making your call election assured, seeking out your own salvation, as well as your sisters that are learning, listening, applying, being obedient to your husbands. Shalom, shalom. Again, it's the brother Zachariah coming back to you with another lesson, and Lord willing to be edifying unto you. All right, on this uh, very sunny, hot Saturday, all right, and uh, you know, like I said, I'm just trying to get myself together health-wise, man, because like I said, this weather's been crazy, and it's actually, you know, decent to finally see some sun, sunshine. Like, man, it's been, it's been almost like a week, man, without any sun at all here. You know, this constant uh, cloud coverage of the entire sky uh, and rain. Uh, you know, the weather, man, it's just been very bad, you know, you're breathing. You know, yes, today's going to be a very hot day, but hey, I'll take the heat, man. I want some sunshine. You know, that sun, man, is 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 good for our skin, all right? Healing mechanism, all right? And this damn devil, that's why he likes to block it out, okay? Because it's a curse on him, all right? But uh, yeah, you know, uh, as you seen the video clip, man, that's what had me saying, my, my, my. You know, it's uh, crazy because of um, a lot of the things that you're... Uh, you're starting to see more and more uh, throughout Babylon, throughout the world for that matter, all right? And uh, you know, our people, man, they, um, you know, it's like they're losing their damn mind, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're seeing more and more of these weird funerals, you know, where they uh, taking, uh, you know, uh, Jake, man, uh, Eve or whatever, man, and having them in these caskets or having them prompt up with blunts in their mouths or, or whatever the case might be, this weird stuff, man. They had one, I think there was one where they took one to a club. Dude was dead, man, and they had him out in the, around a club. I'm talking about one last time before the homie get buried or something, you know, and I'm just like, what? Man, our people, our people are waxing worse and worse, man, in these last days, man. It said, what did the scripture say? Redeem the time because the days of what are evil? Hey, man, it's, it's, it's wicked out here, man. Hey, but the Heavenly Father, man, is going to do a work, man. He's showing us these things because showing you, hey, we're closer and closer to the end. All right. Which this is what we hasten for. All right. But yeah, the scripture says, let the dead bury the dead. All right. And like I said, our people are losing their minds. Hey, this is Jeremiah 4 and 22. All right. It says, for my people is foolish. They have not known me. Okay. They don't know the Heavenly Father, man. They are sottish children. Sottish means stupid, stupidity. Okay? All right? And they have none understanding. They have no understanding. All right? All right? Which you get knowledge, you get wisdom, you get that understanding from what? The Holy Scriptures. Okay? King David said, through thy precepts, I get understanding. All right? Precepts meaning scriptures, man. The scriptures. All right? Connecting the dots, man, and you get understanding. But you get it in the scriptures, and if you're not tapped into these scriptures, then you don't know what's going on. All right? So it says they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil. See? Like I said, in these times is evil. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Okay? And we know the scripture says also uh, wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of our times. It's going to keep you. All right? Hey, that's why we tap into these scriptures because we want that to keep us. We don't want to be like uh, two thirds of our people, as you've seen in that video clip. All right. So you have that. All right. This is Proverbs 21 and 16. All right. It says, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding, see that? 
shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Okay, you know, you could just because you're alive, you're breathing, you're making money, you're out doing stuff, you're living life, you're having fun. You know, don't mean that you're uh, that you're truly alive. Okay, you know, you could you could be doing all those things, you're breathing and fully functioning in good health and still be dead. You know, don't let that go over your head. Okay, it says the congregation of the dead. All right. You know, perfect example is going to tap, go into one of these churches. You know what I'm saying? It, it could, it could be live. They can be having a good sermon, uh, choir singing and everything, but they're calling on a whole nother deity. Okay, they're not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, which is uh, keep is pushing them further and further away from the heavenly Father. They're so disconnected from the heavenly Father and don't even know it. You know. You know, the scripture says you pray, you could. You know, they praise me with their mouths, you know, but it says what? Their hearts are far from me. Okay. All that prayer, all the singing, all this stuff, man. And the heavenly father, man, you're so far from them and don't even realize it, you know, because the God of this world have blinded them. All right. They don't believe when you tell them what the scripture says and they, and they book up against it. Okay. You know, this is why the heavenly father set up his men and we're trying to tell our people, man. And warn our people, all right, and our people don't want to hear it. Okay? So again, it says, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding, all right, shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Okay? You know, another example is like, uh, you know, whenever you have a loved one that die, and the first thing, uh, you know, uh, any nation for that matter would do things like this but uh we have we're focused on our people okay you israelites you so-called negroes hispanics and native americans so when a loved one pass you know you got jake and them they want to go and they want to go get tatted and they like oh man this is for my dead grandma or this is my dead my grandpa or you know a sibling or a parent or whatever whatever you know so they want to go get these tattoos and that's why i, I google and show you tattoos uh, for the dead, okay? People that have passed away, all right? So they'll do these things, all right? Let me see if I can get into a little bit of shade out here. It's, it's, a, it's a hot one. It's a hot one today, all right? Yeah, the internet, man, it's be acting funny. But yeah, that's just a few images right there, all right? You know, just showing, you know, like this one. He got one up there for his dad in loving memory. Okay, so we're going to go and see what the scripture says about this. Now, some of us in this truth, you know, you could be a man of the Lord, a prophet and everything. We might have tattoos. You might see us with tattoos and stuff. We got them before this truth for this, uh, you know, but that's the beautiful thing about this gospel is the heavenly father will clean you up. All right. You're not going to uh, come into this thing squeaky clean and perfect. All right. The heavenly father is cleaning us up. And, you know, uh, in order to know what righteousness is, you're going to have to know what what sin is. And a lot of us had to experience it. All right. But now us waking up to this truth, we come away from it. We realize it. You know, we, we realize, you know, like, um, you know, the food that we we shouldn't be eating. We start we stop eating it. We don't make excuses and stuff like two thirds of our people do. You know, we understand about the tattoos. We're like, man, if I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't um, done it. And the crazy thing about it is even before like l truly having the access and the understanding of these scriptures, you know, my great grandmother, man, taught us not to get tattoos when we were young. She told us not to do it. And therefore, as we, uh, you know, I got older and everything, I ended up getting them. So if I knew better, I wouldn't have done it. What are you doing, what are you doing now? All right. It's one of my neighbors. Uh, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't have done it. OK. So it just shows you, man, that, uh, you know, like uh, how rebellious our people could be, too. You know, she warned us about it. Now, of course, she just said, hey, tattoos is bad. Don't get them and stuff. But she didn't uh, actually go into the scripture or whatever. But, you know, of course, I was young. I was, you know, a child. But she but that stuck with me that she said that. But, you know, you get older, you start to get them and do things and all this kind of stuff. But if I could go back, man, I'd be like, shit, I probably would have never got them. But, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, we, we, we go through these experiences and the Heavenly Father will clean us up. All right. But this is Le Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28. And I'll read this in the NIV. OK, the New International Version. All right. And it says, do not cut your bodies for the dead. See that? 
or put tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord, you know, and it's all caps, meaning Yahweh, the Most High, okay? The Ancient of Days, all right? The King of Terrors, all right? You know, he's got many, many nicknames, man. That King of Terrors, that, that one really be kind of like, you know, I, I keep that with it, but I say it a lot because, you know, hey, he's a God of wrath too. You know, he's a God of mercy. And like I said, you know, uh, he's, he's going to have mercy on, on his uh, people, man. Ultimately, the elect. All right. He has a remnant and the elect. And Lord willing, we be of that precious number. Okay. But we got to show effort, man. We can't just sit back and just say, you know what? You know, no matter what, you know, yeah, I'm good. I, I'm the elect. Or I'm this and that. Don't get too comfortable in that. You know, because, you know, when you read the scriptures, there's going to be many saying, Lord, Lord, I've done all these wonderful works and stuff like that. All right. And we don't want that to happen to us, but it, it, it could it could be a possibility. You have to keep that in mind. And with that, keep keeping that in mind will make you, you know, be very, very careful of how you move about in this truth. All right. How you treat other brothers and how you act. All right. You know, so you just keep that in mind because you don't want, you know, you don't want to put no, you know, people say you don't want to put a stain on the ministry. Hey, you don't want to put a stain on your salvation, <laughs> you know, a damper on your salvation. Okay. All right. So I'll read this again. All right. Leviticus 19 and 28. Look at that. Look at that siren, man. Hey, that's a, that's a, uh, that's a omen, man. That's a sign showing you this place is through. All right. Leviticus 19 verse 28. It says, do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord Yahweh. All right. So you have that. All right. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 5. It says, For the living, all right, know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, okay? Neither have they any more, uh, any more a reward, okay? For the memory of them is forgotten, all right? And you got people, man, they go, they visit grave sites, they put flowers down, they do all this extra stuff, go above and beyond with tombstones and things like that. Man, you're putting too much effort in all that. When meanwhile, you should be really focused on your salvation because you can end up there next. Okay? You can end up in there next. You know? You're focusing on the wrong thing. You know? Some people put so much effort into that. You know? Uh, you know? And don't get me wrong. Like, you know, I've lost some loved ones, man. And I grieve. They hurt. You know? Like, my grandmother was a, that was a rough one, man, because, you know, she actually uh, raised me and my older sister. She was the one that raised us, you know, so I was around her, and that really kept me out of a lot of trouble. A lot of people, you know, uh, I look at some of my uh, peers and stuff and how they ended up locked up and this and that and going a whole different path. You know, not saying that I didn't get in trouble, all right, but, you know, I didn't end up in no prison. And the Heavenly Father, uh, he kept me. But, uh, you know, I was raised um, upright, man, around uh, really good uh, grandparents, man, in that two-parent household. Because a lot of times that single-parent household do a lot of damage on you, too. You know, my parents divorced when I, I was born. You know, they were divorced. You know, they were going through, uh, which uh, I, I'm surprised it even lasted to where I came about because it was rough. It was rocky between... Um, them with my older sister you know as you know they told me the stories i heard both sides of their story and stuff but uh it was a rough one you know but uh you know the heavenly father had a plan you know because them two coming together brought forth me and my older sister all right now my sister's not in this truth and she's just her mind is just gone but you know i went into it a, a while back in a lesson of why she's like that you know you know the heavenly father uh you know he's i think he put like a uh uh, shoot, what you call it? Uh, can't even think of the, the name right now. Uh, a reprobate. There we go. A reprobate mind owner, you know, because, uh, my sister, man, she, she's one of those, um, that like to hang, hang with all those Edomites, those Edomite girls and stuff. And, uh, I remember back in the, in our younger days, man, she would, uh, hang out with them and, uh, they was into a lot of that witchcraft stuff, man. And she tapped into a lot of that. And I think, uh, I honestly believe she's still tapping into it till this day, you know, because uh, there was a, uh, not so long ago, man, she was on uh, Facebook, that's why she got off there, but she was uh, posting pictures with a lot of candles 
and she's had this real obsession with a lot of cats and stuff, which you know that a lot of that stuff is linked with witches and stuff, and she's into all that dark stuff, man. Waxing worse and worse, you know. But the heavenly father put a reprobate spirit mind on her, man, and it's just it's 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 sad, you know. But out of out of both parents, you know, hey, you know, uh, or both children, you know, you have, you know, my older sister and then me, you know, and here it is, the heavenly father um chose me, you know what I'm saying? You know, and, and I, you know, he made the cut, you know, the call out, man, and I answered, you know. Like I said, I'm not perfect, you know. I'm not perfect. You know, but uh, I'm grateful for this truth, man. You know, I, I tell people uh, uh, all the time, man, hey, this is all I got, man. You take this away from me, man. I have nothing. You know, I can't go back into the world. You know, this is it. This is it, man. You know, and that's why, I, hey, man, I'll fight tooth and nail over it, man. This is all I got, man. You know, I can't, I can't let somebody take that from me, man. You know, this is all I got, you know, and this is true purpose. All right, so again, it says, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither uh, have they uh, any more a reward, for the memory of them, all right, is forgotten. All right? And, uh, yeah, you know, like I said, our people, man, get so so focused into that, and they do so much. Hey, man, when, when you die, the scriptures even tell you, when you die, all spirits go back up to the Heavenly Father. Hey, you go through, uh, you know, you, you receive your judgment, because everyone's got to stand before the Heavenly Father, man. All right. But all spirits go back up to the heavenly father. All right. To be judged on the things that you've done. All right. And uh, but our people are so focused, man, on, on the dead, man. All right. When uh, a lot of people are, are spiritually dead, man, they're just walking about, man. You know, you always hear that term dead man walking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A dead man walking. How is a dead person walking? OK, unless they're a zombie. But, hey, you know, which, hey, they're. <laughs> Hey, they, they could be zombies. <laughs> That's a lot of zombies walking around. Okay. All right. So this uh, here is another thing. You know, and you notice know like, uh, and, and you see that there's Jake. You know, whenever, um, you know, uh, you know what they what they call it a homie. You know, when a, when a homie pass, you know, uh, somebody part of the gang, the squad, or whatever. You know how Jake in the world be. You know someone pass away you know uh a gangster all right then they do things like this they pour out what pour out a little liquor okay well uh look you can see right here underneath uh is that a i don't know who that is and it kind of looked like it was mike epps but i don't know i can't really see it's too bright but uh you know it's a jake pouring out the liquor but you see the words under there it says libation for the dead okay keep that word libation in mind we're gonna look up something all right just to show you, man, some of these things that we were accustomed to doing, all right, are really not uh, in tune with the scriptures, all right? It might be mentioned in the scriptures, but it's it's not mentioned in a good way. Like, if you're doing these things, man, the Heavenly Father can judge you, okay? All right? So, I wanted to pull this up here real quick, and it says, Pouring out, uh, pouring liquor for the dead, also known as libation. See that? Like I never knew that I just thought that you know you hear that and say oh man somebody pour out a little liquor for, for somebody that passed away It says a pouring one out is an ancient ritual See that ancient ritual that involves pouring a liquid usually an alcoholic beverage on the ground as a sign of respect for deceased friends or relatives the practice has been incorporated into many religions and cultures throughout history, including ancient Egypt, Greece, and Israel. So, you know, our people were doing hey, nothing new under the sun. Our people was doing this in ancient uh, Israel. All right. But is that a good thing? All right. Just because we were doing it in the ancient world. Hey, uh, uh, sometimes you got to think, hey, uh, that could be one of, one of many reasons that our, uh, we fell as a people, you know, because hey, the list is huge on all the things that we've done. Okay. All right, and then it says the word libation comes from the Latin word uh, labatio, uh, labatio, or however you pronounce it, which means sacrificial offering of liquid. Okay, but that's going to a deity. It's not. It's not going to Yahweh Shimei Awashai. Okay, he ain't tell you to do nothing like that. All right, so you have that. All right, and I just wanted to pull up the word libation. All right, and it says a drink poured out as a offering to a deity, like I just said. See that? 
a drink poured out as a offering to a deity. Okay. It says the pouring out a uh, out of a drink uh, as an offering to a deity. All right. And let's see. It says offering, tribute, dedication, oblation, sacrifice. Like who's that deity? All right. This is Exodus 20 and verse 3. It says, Thou shalt, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay? There's there not supposed to be any other gods before uh, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah, man. All right? So, who are you pouring this out to? Okay? So, I'll read this again. Thou shalt not have, uh, thou shalt have no other gods before me. All right? As I wanted to also pull this up here. This is the role of spirituality and prayer in the Black Lives Matter movement. Okay, because one of the things about it, I learned, um, you know, while you know they were being exposed that those uh, women were not only uh, lesbians, but they were also uh, witches. You know, they operate in witchcraft. You know, even you know you had so-called Christian pastors exposing them on that. All right. And the Heavenly Father's not dealing with that. Now, us Israelites knew something wasn't right about that. We weren't running out there with them talking about Black Lives Matter and stuff. Okay? But again, it says the role of spirituality and prayer in the Black Lives Matter movement. It says KCRW's Jonathan Bastian, all right, talks with Melina Abdullah, co founder of Black Lives Matter Los Angeles and professor of Pan -Afri African Studies at California State University, Los Angeles, and Habad Farag, all right, assistant director of research at USC Center for Religions and Civic Culture about the role of the church, prayer, and rituals in the Black Lives Matter movement, all right, and it says, in our earlier conversation, Dr. Yolanda Pierce, she noted that Black Lives Matter movement, in her mind, started as a secular movement, would you agree, all right, but, uh, let's see, I don't want to read all this, all right? Look, they over here talking about spiritual energy. Up there it says spiritual power, which we know, hey, the Heavenly Father is going to give spiritual power to the elect, okay? His elect men, all right? But these are women here talking about all this stuff, man. And like, you know, they'll say things spiritual, but hey, what do you mean by spiritual, okay? You know, because hey, you, you know, we know there's left hand spirits, all right? And there's uh, the right hand, all right? Which the right hand are to consider the righteous, okay? The left hand is demonic, all right? Which which one are you moving? What vibration are you moving on? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was a part in here that I wanted to look for. Uh, let's see. It. Here we go. Here we go down here. All right. This part right here is, all right, I'll see what the question says. It says, can you talk about how you begin a protest? Names of ancestors evoked. Prayers said those who haven't had a chance to participate. How do you characterize those moments? This is Abdullah. It said, uh, we generally ask that people not film the openings of our events, all right, and demonstrations. Yes, yeah, see, they don't want that to be on film, all right, and part of that is the demonization of the way uh, in which we acknowledge spiritual energy wow you supposed to be bold all right if you're doing it and it's, it's an okay thing then you wouldn't care all right but see they don't want that filmed okay talking about the demonization it's because it is wicked all right and it says so i have seen some of those articles some of those critiques of pouring libation all right which it tells you it goes it's pouring out to a deity all right you know, why, why, why not just say, hey, it's, it's going towards the Heavenly Father, okay? Or his son, you know, through his son, all right? But it's not, okay? Which is which is a centuries-old tradition among African people, okay? Well, see, under also understanding we are not African. See, that, that, they pushed that vibration on us. Our people got in trouble for uh, taking on the customs of the, uh, the true African people, which are the Hamitic people. They're descendants of Ham, Hamites, okay? And they were heavily rooted in in a lot of sorcery witchcraft uh stuff that is not of of um yahweh bashimi al-shah not of our customs but we tapped into a lot of that stuff and we hold on to it to, to this day which is keep uh have our people you know, all jacked up and, and getting in uh you know being at odds with the heavenly father 
All right. It says, all right. It says among African people acknowledging that uh, when bodies are stolen, spirits still remain. Now, I see the body says that they are all uh, all spirits are called back up to the heavenly father. So see, they're going up against the, what the Bible says. It says, so there was that consciousness, but more than that consciousness, uh, as we pour libation, see, there you go with that word again, okay, and engage in spiritual work. We actually don't want that disrupted in any way by filming because we believe that the filming actually disrupts some of the spiritual energy. It says, all Black Lives Matter meetings and protests begin with the pouring of libation. So it says they all begin with that, all right? See, the Heavenly Father is not dealing with that. All right, this is Exodus 23 and verse 2. It says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause, all right, to decline after uh, many to rest judgment, okay? You ain't supposed to follow a multitude to do uh, evil. That's evil. That's not of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh. I don't care how they want to word it or what they say, okay? All right. It is not, uh, they can say, well, uh, uh, the Bible is not our custom. Okay, yeah, it isn't. The Bible is for the Israelites, but just because it, it ain't your, it ain't for you, don't mean that what you're doing as part of your custom is right, is a righteous thing. The Heavenly Father said it, it isn't. And who are you? You can't go up against what the Heavenly Father says. And see, the he Heavenly Father is going to start he casting out a heavy judgment on these nations, okay? Which a lot of them are getting hit anyways, all the time. You know, a lot of it, just, it goes, uh, uh, it doesn't be, it's not brought out, you know, as much, uh, you know, like in the news and stuff and articles, but you know, there's judgment that goes out every day, every day. All right. All right. You have that. All right. This is the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 47 and I'll start at verse nine. I'm gonna read a little bit. So I'm gonna do it like this. All right, again, Isaiah 47, I'm going to start at verse 9, says, But these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries. See that? And for the great abundance of thy enchantments. See that? For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. See? Thou hast said, none seeth me. All right? The, the moving the cameras away. You know, they don't want to be seen. Okay? All right? Thy wisdom and thy knowledge. It, it hath perverted thee, see that? And thou hast said in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. All right, therefore shall evil come upon thee, thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, see that? And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which which thou shalt not know. Hey, man, they're going to get hit with all kinds of judgments. Verse 12 says, Stand now with thy enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth, if so, uh, if so be thou shall be able to profit. All right. If so, uh, be thou mayest prevail. Thou art weary in, in the multitude of thy counsels. Let, let now the astrologers, stargazers, monthly pro, uh, pro, pronosticators, okay, stand up and save thee from the things that shall come upon thee. Woo! Verse 14, behold, they shall be a stubble. The fire shall burn them. So you're gonna get you're gonna get that fire man <laughs> Woo! they shall not they shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame they shall not be able uh they shall not be a coal to warm uh, at nor fire to sit before it hey man the heavenly father man is to be feared man he's gonna bring judgment and he's gonna bring that fire you know by way of his son yahweh shai he said he's gonna come with that fire he says the slaying of the lord shall be many you know, Whew. that's heavy. This is the book of Second Corinthians, chapter six. All right, in verse seventeen, and I'll go ahead and end it on this. Lord willing, this has been edifying. Just a quick lesson. You know, a few precepts that come to mind. You know, uh, you know, just showing you like the mindset of our people and how like those things, man. Um, that that our people are engaging in, man, uh, are not of uh, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, man. Okay. It's complete wickedness, all right? And we got to come out of those things, man. You know, hey, don't let these people uh, fool you, man, with their uh, soft words. Oh, it's just this or it's just that, you know? And our people have been called African-American, African. We're all from Africa and stuff like that. No, there were people already here, man, okay? And those people were Israelites. Yes, we have people in Africa that are our people. They are Israelites. They might label themselves as African because they don't know no better. 
okay we have we have lost our heritage it was beaten out of us stripped from us okay whether it was the Hamites all right the Ishmaelites which are your Arabs this is why a lot of our people are tapped into the Arabs religion you'll see you'll see uh, Africans go over there to Dubai dressed just like the people in Dubai and and, and, and keep um, those their religion okay because it was put it was forced upon them okay and then uh, also the Edomites you can't forget the Edomites you know coming in and taking our people captive and got our people uh, all rooted up in Christianity okay but this is 2nd Corinthians 6 and verse 17 says wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate okay to be separate is to be holy to be holy is to be separate separate from who it's this world okay so again, it says, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord Yahweh, all right? And touch not the unclean thing, okay? Don't touch the libation, the Black Lives Matter, the tattooing uh, of the dead, okay? These funerals, okay? You know, all right? Touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you, okay? So as long as you are tapped into all those different things like that, the Heavenly Father cannot receive you. The Heavenly Father cannot deal with you, okay? You're going to remain in the congregation of the dead, as I stated earlier, okay? So if you have eyes to see, ears to hear, okay, hearken unto his men, okay, which are bringing you uh, the voice of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by, by way of us preaching this word okay we speak as the oracles of god these are not our opinions our thoughts our feelings no we tap into these scriptures and bring out what the scripture says okay but you want to come out of those things and the heavenly father will receive you okay it's the only way or you're going to receive that judgment as i read you know that that fire okay all right and nobody's going to be able to save or deliver you from that weeping and gnashing of teeth all right so with that, Lord willing, you have found this lesson here edifying. I want to give all honor, all glory, and all praise unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, double honors to the elders of the nation of Israel, and Shalom to you brothers and sisters out there. Until the next one, Shalom.